Okay, moving along, let's say I need to make a, a hose segment now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use Path Express again just to establish a connection between one outlet and another. Let's say these two points here. And that will create a 3D line segment. What I can then do is use this curve segment to turn that right angle into a curve. And I just basically click on it. I can then go and adjust my end conditions to control sort of how this curves out. And I can kind of do that dynamically or I can key in a step over here. Once that's done, I can then start the tube command and use that path. This time this is actually going to be a piece of hydraulic hose, so I'll name this hose 1 and I'll set my um, material to be what I've already said is hydraulic hose. We're also going to want that to be 0 0.5 in diameter and I can ch change the bend radius too if I want. Now I'll select that curve, right click to accept and it'll create that hose. One of the good things about uh, these tube routes is that they'll, they'll stay associative to their parts. So if, for example, I want to move this manifold part, let's say I need to move it over three and a half inches from where it was, notice that my path will follow that along and once I complete the move, my hose length will update. So these are all live. Anything that I can uh, grab and move, all of my tube lengths will adjust. You can see that path going along with it and when I click to place it, um, well, first it'll ask me um, that I've, I've violated some assembly relationships. I don't care about that. And then it will go and update that. Okay, let's finish this off just by dropping another. We'll use Path Express again to connect these two points here. And that'll go and create that. Then I'll use, uh, I'll manually draw some line segments to kind of have a little bit more control over how this other line goes. You see I'm going to lock it to the Y, so I'm along the Y. Maybe I want that to come in three and a half inches before I jog it back up again and place it in here. Now I'm a little too far along, so what I might do is I might just go and adjust that distance here. Let's make that two and a half. And now back at my line segment I can continue along. And what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to lock into a direction, pick up on a key point, and once I've got that key point, I can then jog it back in and I know that those are connected. Then I'll use my tube command and I'll create those two tube sections. and cancel out of the command when I'm done. Now, in order to document this, uh, I'm going to go into a, well first I'll get out of Express Route, I'll save my file, and I'm going to go into a draft now. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to document this into a draft, so I'll create a drawing, I want to use my ANSI template, and in this case I'm just going to drop in a front view of the part. And maybe what I want to do this time is those lines are all going to come in black. Maybe for some clarity I'll just select that drawing view, go up to properties, and what I want to do is go into the shading and color tab and use the model colors. Even though it's a line drawing I'll just update that view and I've got some color that'll help make it a little clearer. Now the last thing I want to do is create a parts list and I'm going to select the drawing view and then from my saved parts list I've got a tube table that I've created and that's going to sit there and it's going to populate um, my parts list with um, all sorts of tube data. You see here that I've got the total flat length so I know the length of each of my tubes as well as the quantity and the material. And anytime I want I can go in and edit that parts list and add more columns or data and you can see we have a whole bunch of tube information that we can add in here.